The Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes in the, in the Flathead Indian Reservation is my home, it's special. It's different because of where we live, it's different because of who we are. We had this beautiful base of land, some 1.3 million acres, crystal clear blue waters that make it, in my view, uh, one of the best places to live. We're not separate from the land or the water or the clean air that we breathe or the animals or the birds or the fish. We're all connected and that's just such an important piece of who we are as Native people and as caretakers and caregivers of the land. It's a family and, and that's who we are and that's the reservation. That's our home. These cultures are living, vivid cultures. The spirit here is incredible. The homeland is incredible, and it's been a lot of heartbreak in the past, a lot of suffering by past members of this tribe. Never again will we let somebody else make our decisions. And the only way we can do that in this world is to be able to financially have that power. My name is Shelley Fiant, I'm bitter at Salish, and I currently serve as the chairwoman of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai Tribes. But basically the role of the Tribal Council is we're the governing body and so we develop and enforce policy and ordinances for the tribe for the safety and well-being of our membership. Due to our constitution, the tribe is not able to tax, so they have to live on fees and revenue that they create through their enterprises. SNK Technologies is a family of companies, and so we're more of a holding company. We have 10 subsidiary companies, do everything from tower and construction work to repair and return work for, for different contracts for the U.S. government. SNK Technologies each year declares a dividend and provides a dividend back to our shareholder, the Confederated Salish and Kootenai Tribes, for their use in education, cultural, housing, health of its members. So we have an obligation for the tribe to have that revenue, which is not restricted by any federal program. It's not restricted by any federal grant. It is money that the tribal leadership can determine where it's to be spent that is most critical in their planning. We underwent a strategic planning session a few years ago, and through that process, we identified top priorities. The first being cultural perpetuation, because our people were subjected to boarding schools and that interrupted our, our traditional way of life. When you take three, four, five-year-old kids from their home and their parents and their way of being and you put them in a boarding school until they're 18. The priests and nuns uh, were very strict with the kids in terms of uh, keeping them from speaking their native language for fear that it would hold them back from learning English. And uh, lo and behold, after a number of decades, we started to get fewer and fewer speakers. We lost a lot of our culture and we lost a lot of our language through that process. And it's, it's really important, the language, the spirituality of, of the Indian people, regardless of what tribe you come from, is important to, to keep passing on. The Kootenai language is a language isolate, and so it being endangered, it's on the verge of being an extinct language. Each year, uh, or a couple of years, we lose a, a critical component uh, individuals here and there and each time that happens we lose another page uh, regarding language. When you're surrounded by a dominant language, by a different language every day, it's just it's really hard to to bring back a language that's really been decimated. We're trying to restore that and to that end we've established two language apprenticeship programs. We are currently training interns to be teachers. We hire seven at a time and we try to keep, them, keep the program moving along so we can get our teachers into the local schools. We were very fortunate to find the funding through um, a lot of our corporate dividends. So as language apprentices, we can actually provide a living wage to those people who are so inclined to you know, want to learn their language. 
has had Sierra Mesela Louis Quest, Telot Sketku, Uchis Sketlehu. My name is Sierra Mesela. I've been studying the Salish language for about a year now. I just started. Prior to that, I knew a few select words milk, yes, no. The practices that are passed down from generation to generation is something that I wanted to give to my son. I wanted him to experience everything that I've experienced and give him more than you know what I had. So learning the language was perfect. It's very important to, as a young youth, to, to get involved in traditional and cultural practices. Educate them in who we are and why we're here. When you really start to understand language and learn your language, you, you see the importance, the connection, how it's interwoven into everything of who we are. It's the foundation of, of understanding Sedlish Kudlis about worldview. The culture and the language is important because it gives us our identity. It ties into the language and the culture, so learning this is just giving me a stronger foundation that I can go forward with and help protect the land for my people. We are a tribally owned corporation. However, we also contribute uh, funding to the community at large. You know, one of the prime examples uh, that comes to mind is the Boys and Girls Club. I'm Eric Cooksley with Boys and Girls Club. I'm the executive director for the Boys and Girls Clubs of the Flathead Reservation. So we serve school age kids sixth all the way through graduation from high school. At the core, we have three priority outcomes that we want to have every kid who walks through our doors have the opportunity to achieve. And we want to have them gain academic success and a gained love of learning development of character and leadership, and then creation of healthy lifestyles. That physical and nutritional healthy lifestyle to the social, emotional health, mental health side of a healthy lifestyle. We always make sure that money is never an issue for a child being able to come here, and so we have numerous scholarships and things that allow any child who wants to be here to be here. So a company like SNK Technologies, you know, that continues to support us in different ways is really the lifeblood of making sure that every kid has the opportunity to have not just the ability to be here, but fantastic programming, fantastic opportunities that they wouldn't otherwise get. I think the other thing too that's really been um, uh, important for uh, SKT is the scholarships that we've been able to provide for students. I'm Dr. Sandra Boham and I am currently serving as the president of Salish Kootenai College. We have a diverse group of students. Um, the majority of our students are tribal, are Pell eligible students, which means they're below poverty level, is over 80%. They have needs, they have economic needs. The scholarships that come to us and the support that we get from SNK Technologies for those students is significant. My name is Whitney Molitaire and I was the recipient of the SNK Technology Scholarship not only once but twice. I probably wouldn't have gone back to school if I didn't get funding for school because I got SNK's scholarship. Like I was able to not have to worry about financial my child going to daycare. I was able to spend time in school. We really want to retain the students that are from our reservation. We're training the next generation of leaders. This is the next group of people that are gonna serve in our tribal government, that are gonna manage our natural resources. We need those students here. They understand our cultural values. They understand our tribal values. They understand the community that we live in. And you can't get that somewhere else. And so we need those people here. A scholarship isn't just about money. It's about somebody that believes in you and wants you to succeed and wants to help you in every opportunity. When the job opportunity opened, I thought it'd be a great idea to take it and come back around and give back to SNK who gave to me when I needed it. And what's so critical with uh, Salish Kootenai Technologies is that the, the funding that they give 
uh, to the tribes are able to be used at the tribal council's discretion. I think all of the tribal dividends are critical to the tribal leadership to sustain the tribe. SNK Technologies is different. There is a social good to the corporation. You're making decisions for generations, not just for today and the benefit of a shareholder's maximized value of stock today. I would just like to thank the SNK Technologies employees for the work that they do and, and just know that it provides so much to our tribe. But everything is coming to this point. Like we're down to our last few fluent speakers. That's why the revenue from all the enterprises, but specifically in these hard times, is helping to assure that language education and the very survival of the Salish and Kootenai people is assured. That's how important it is. SNK Technologies, more than anybody, stepped up numerous times to come alongside us and, and provide funding, provide you know, some expertise at a couple different times, and also help connect us with other folks who could give as well. SNK believed in me, so I want to give back to them. By giving back to SNK and working for them, I also get to give back to my people. So I'm thankful for you. I'm able to see a future for myself because of this program that would have never been possible. And to be able to teach my son what I'm learning when I'm learning it is, I can't say it enough.